Good evening, everyone. Hope you're doing well on this cold day. It's good to see everyone. Uh, so yeah, so I'll be sharing with you today. Hello to all our viewers on YouTube. Um, so I'm just gonna label tonight's topic as where are you going? So just keep that in mind as we go through tonight. And um, I got the message or I guess the topic of tonight's message from our conversation yesterday we had with the men. So you guys, so to the guys who were there yesterday, you know, you might hear some similarities, but just bear with me, you know, we'll, we'll get through this night. But um, yeah, so not last night, but uh, the night before we had our men's wing night meeting, you know, we were, we, Reinhardt always asks us this, these, these topics for conversation. And you know, about a month ago, the topic was, uh, what is your calling? You know, what do you think your calling is? And we just began going out each by one, just around the table saying what we felt our calling was. And then Reinhardt always, he would always, Reinhardt always has a follow-up question. He'd always ask us, okay? And he'd be like, okay, so how, how do you plan on getting there? And I remember I said what I thought and he was just like, yeah, but no. And I'm like, okay, that's fine. Like, you know, I need, I need the correction, you know, cause I need to know where I'm going. But um, time back to yesterday, uh, we had our topic of, I guess it was, you know, when God tells you to do something, um, do you do it even though you have opposition, even though you have people who might say you're crazy and whatnot, are you still going to do it? And so, well, we were just talking about that yesterday, you know, when God calls you to do something, you know, you do it because it's the Lord telling you and nothing else matters, but you're going to stick to it because, you know, it's God calling, telling you, calling you to do it. And as we were just talking, you know, Reinhardt started talking. He started a topic off, as he always does. And then he said, any comments? So Nick started to speak for a second. But then, you know, I also, I, re I replied, I had a comment. But it wasn't just a comment I had from, from like, my, I guess it was my knowledge. But I know it was the Lord who, who gave this comment in my mind. Because through the Monday night classes, I've learned how to perceive how God speaks to me. And the way he speaks to me is... He speaks to me like it's like just a, like a thought just comes out of nowhere. It, it comes really quickly and I know it's not my voice. I know it's not my mind. It's just something that comes really quickly to me. And what I received was, you know, the story of Noah and how Noah was told to build this ark. You know, there were people ridiculing them. I'll get, I'll get more into that later. But um, so, yeah, so just the Lord revealed to me the story of Noah. So if we just open up our Bibles to Genesis 6. 13 to 14. Just waited for it to go on the screen. Genesis 6, 13 to 14. Okay, well, it says like this. And God said to Noah, the, the end of all flesh has come before me, for the earth is filled with violence through them, and behold, I destroy them with the earth. Make yourself an ark of gopher wood, gopher wood, make rooms in the ark, and cover it inside, inside and outside with pitch. And if we go to 17, from 17 to 22. So 17 says, and behold, I myself am bringing flood waters to the earth. This is the Lord speaking to destroy from under heaven all flesh in which is the breath of life. Everything that is on the earth shall die, but I will establish my covenant with you and you shall go into the ark, you, your sons, your wife, your sons' wives, and you. And of every living thing of all flesh, you shall bring two of every sort into the ark to keep them alive with you. They shall be male and female of the birds after their kind, of animals after their kind, and of every creeping thing of the earth after its kind. Two of every kind will come to you to keep them alive. And you shall take for yourself of all food that is eaten, and you shall gather it to yourself, and it shall be food for you and for them. So 22 is, thus Noah did according to all God commanded him. And so he did. So I just take, let's just take a time in prayer. And Lord, I just thank you for this message. Lord, we thank you for this word. Lord, I pray you just guide me, that your spirit is the one speaking through me, Lord God, and that 
any false sayings that I may have, Lord, that it just stays out of, their, out of our minds, Lord, out of our ears, Lord, but you can just continue speaking to this word that you've given me, Lord. So in the name of Jesus, we give you praise. Amen and amen. Amen. So back to Genesis. So we see here that the Lord saw that all men's hearts, their, their thoughts were wicked, you know, and just some context in this, at this point in time, which is very early in the earth, um, humans, we were living up to about 120 years old. In the Bible, it says the time of the flood's arrival, Noah was 634, I believe. So, I mean, you could imagine it was, it was a long time. So God told Noah to make the ark, the bow. I'm, I'm going to call it the bow because it's just easier for me. So Noah, so God told Noah, you know, go make this bow. And that was it. He said, go make this ark or this boat and I'm going to bring all these flood waters because I don't like the way humans are acting right now and you'll live inside of it with all the animals and you'll get food but that was it you know God never tells Noah Noah I want you to make this boat because you're going to be on it for this many days and you're going to end up in this point right here he didn't say Noah uh, build this boat and I'm going to take you to another planet or he said you know you know he didn't say anything he just said Noah build a boat and go in it. And when I was reading this, and it goes along with our conversation we had yesterday, you know, I went through the Bible and I, I was looking for the opposition Noah would have faced, but it doesn't say anything. But I believe and I imagine that as Noah started building this boat, you know, and it was a big boat. There's a replica in, in China, I think. This, this thing was massive, you know. I feel like People seeing Noah build this boat would have been like, what are you doing? Why are you spending all your time, all your dedication? Why are you putting all your money into this? Because I bet Noah had, he definitely had family to take care of. He probably had land. He probably had animals. But he said, Lord, I will build this boat. And he dedicated it to himself. And speaking with Reinhardt yesterday, you know, he told me that in that time, there wasn't any rain, how the water would come up from the ground. So imagine you knowing that the only way water comes to the earth is through the ground and some guy building a big boat says, oh yeah, you know, it's going to rain like crazy and the whole earth is going to be flooded. You would probably think, okay, buddy, like, like you're crazy, right? But no, Noah, Noah was obedient and he did what the Lord commanded him. And what I'm trying to get at here is only you can hear the calling that God has for your life. Only you can hear what God is telling you to do. Now, the Lord can reveal to other people stuff for you, you know, he can reveal things about you or he can reveal something to someone else to tell you, but the specific task that you have at hand, only he has given you. So, you know, back to Noah, he didn't know where he was going, he didn't know what the outcome was going to be. All he knew was, go make this boat, go make the ark. So I ask you, has God ever said anything to you? Has he ever told you to do something? Has he ever called you to do something? And you maybe might have questioned it. Or have you said, Lord, thank you. I'm going to start doing this, you know? Maybe, maybe the Lord said, I want you to start exercising. And you say, okay, Lord, I'll, okay, I'll look about it. So then you start looking to gyms. You know, you, you go here and there. You start looking at different memberships. But you never get to actually exercising or do you start straight? You know what, Lord, okay, I'll go for a run tomorrow. But Noah did exactly what he was told. And when God has something specific for our lives, it's, it's meant for us because only we can do that task. Only we can fulfill that accomplishment. Only we can do what God has told us. So thinking about this and just thinking about, you know, our callings, I was listening to Mike and Nick's uh, messages from from the past weeks and Mike's was you know the process in which we go through and then Nick on Sunday was saying um, it was uh, what is it was what what is what is your call God's calling you right yeah so it was pardon God's calling are you listening thank you and then so you know just so I thought about this and I thought you know okay we all have our specific task at hand. We all have our specific calling. So, so why did Noah build the ark? You know, why did God choose him? So there are two reasons why Noah was chosen. So if we go back to Genesis 6.22, which is still up there, it says, 
thus Noah did according to all that God commanded him. So he did. Sorry, wrong scripture. If we go to Genesis 6, 9. Sorry, guys. There we go. So it says, this is the genealogy of Noah. Noah was a just man, perfect in his generations. Noah walked with God. So two things there. It says, the word says, perfect in his generations. Now, I don't know about you, but I only know one person who's perfect, and that is Jesus, right? So the fact that it says Noah was perfect means he was a man of God in that time of wickedness in the earth, and he walked with God. Now, if we go to Genesis 7, 1, it says like this. I'll just go ahead. It says, Then the Lord said to Noah, Come into the ark, you and all your household, because I have seen that you are righteous before me in this generation. So, why do I believe Noah was chosen? Because A, he was walking with God, and B, because he was righteous. So, so what does this have to do? So, when you look at someone like Ramon or Reinhardt, you know, why was Ramon chosen to come here to Canada to start the church here? You know what? I believe because he was righteous, and I believe he was walking with God. Why is Reinhardt the pastor? I believe he was righteous, and he was walking with God. So that's why Noah was, you know, told, build this ark, because he was righteous, and he walked with God. And so I asked myself, you know, okay, where, where, are, where, where are you going? You know, where are you going with this calling? Where are you going with this walk that you have? And as I've grown, and I've grown up in the church, you know, and I've received many words, but... As, as I get older, as I get more mature, I start to, I start to relate a bit more with Reinhardt and his life. You know, I, can, I hear what Reinhardt says and I can see, you know what, okay, I'm going through that. Like Reinhardt says at times, he said this pretty recently, how, how he doesn't have any friends. And I want to be here to say, Reinhardt, you know, you, I, I'm your friend, so you got at least one friend in me and I feel like we all are his friends. But just hearing Reinhardt, you know, he says, you know, as he's grown more mature in the Lord, you know, you stop doing certain things, you let go of certain friends, and I can see that in my life because of all my friends in high school, you know, I, I barely talked to anyone. And that was because they had one path of life, they were doing certain things, and I was like, no, I'm okay. And even looking now in university, you know, I still have my good core friends, but I only see my friends maybe, maybe twice a month, if, if at that, you know. My good friend Andrea, I see her we meet up every two to three weeks. And these are like my good friends. My one friend, he lives far away. And we barely talk. But I see you guys more. You guys are my true family. So, when I'm so going back to where are we going and, and what is your calling, you know, as you, as you start to ask the Lord or as you start walking in, in towards that calling, you know, that calling that God has for you, you know, you really truly start, you know, dying. You start losing yourself like Luke, 923 says if anyone desires to come after me let him deny himself and take up his cross daily and follow me so that's how i related back to noah because noah was walking with god and i find i find the word walking very particular because in ancient times they had no cars they had no planes you were either walking everywhere you were taking a boat or if you had money back then you were either taking a donkey or a horse, you know? And I find out why walking, why doesn't it say running or sprinting or jogging? But when you walk somewhere, you walk at your own pace. When you walk somewhere, you can look at all the scenery. You can enjoy what you're looking at, you know? But when you walk for a long time, you get tired. Your body starts to hurt. Your body starts to ache. And when you walk with someone, you don't walk with strangers. Because, like, how many... Hands up if you've ever walked with a stranger. Like like purposefully no one you don't walk with the stranger right you walk with someone you know you walk with a friend you walk with a loved one you walk with someone that has a you have a relationship with someone right so Noah walked with God because Noah had that relationship with God Noah knew God God knew Noah that's why he was walking with him that's why he had that calling to build a boat so as, as we just grow and we get closer to, to the Lord and, and closer to our calling, we have to keep on walking with the Lord, building on that relationship. So when we go to Colossians 2, 6 to 8. Colossians 2, 6 to 8. It says, 
As you therefore have received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk in him, rooted and built up in him, and established in the faith as you have been taught, abounding in it with thanksgiving. Beware lest anyone cheat you through philosophy and empty deceit, according to the tradition of men, according to the basic principles of the world, and not according to Christ. And if we go to Ephesians 4.1, it says, I therefore, the prisoner of the Lord, beseech you to walk worthy of the calling in which you were called. So Ephesians 4.1, amen. It's good scripture, I like that one. But it says, so walk in him, walk in Jesus Christ, walk with him, to walk worthy of the calling in which you were called. And a calling has to be it has to be vocal, it has to be, you have to hear it, you know? You, had, you truly had to be listening to hear a calling because if I wanted to call Nick from here right now, if I go like this, that's not calling, I'm just grabbing his attention. But I have to say, hey Nick, come over here, I'm calling him, he's gonna hear me, he's gonna see me. So we all have to be just, just listening, you know, just walking with the Lord, just getting ready to, just to hear him, what he has for us. And sometimes we might not know what our calling is. I don't know if you know what your calling is in this life. I don't know. I don't know what your journey is in this life. But sometimes we don't know what our calling is. Sometimes we need someone else to say, hey, you know what? The Lord told me this. And I have an example of that. A couple years ago, we were in a team meeting in Reinhardt's old house. And, you know, the Lord just revealed to them, you know, let's just, someone just go in the middle, sit down, and we'll all pray for them. And, you know, just one after another we went. And I went and sat down and they prayed for me. And then they received that I was to be a, a missionary. That was part of my calling. So, so now that I know that, I had to see what I have to do in order to take that call. I had to see what I had to do to take that pass. And this happened also in the Bible. If we go to 1 Samuel 3 to 1 to 9. So that is 1 Samuel 3, 1 to 9. And this is a pretty common story. I'm pretty sure you guys have heard and know this scripture very well. So it says, Now the boy Samuel ministered to the Lord before Eli. And the word of the Lord was rare in those days. There was no widespread revelation. And it came to pass at that time, while Eli was lying down in his place, and when his eyes had begun to grow so dim that he could not see, and before the lamp of God went out in the tabernacle of the Lord where the ark of God was. And while Samuel was lying down, that the Lord called Samuel. And he answered, here I am. So he ran and said, he ran to Eli and said, here I am, for you called me. And Eli said, I did not call you, lie down again. And he went to lay down. So, sorry, then the Lord, number six, then the Lord called yet again, Samuel. So Samuel arose and went to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. He answered, I did not call you, my son. Lie down again. 7. Now Samuel did not yet know the Lord, nor was the word of the Lord revealed to him yet. So we go to 8. And the Lord called Samuel again the third time. So he arose and went to Eli and said, Here I am, for you did call me. Then Eli perceived that the Lord had called the boy. Therefore Eli said to Samuel, Go lie down, and it shall be, if he calls you, that you must say, Speak, Lord, for your servant hears. So Samuel went to lay down in his place. 10. Now the Lord came and stood and called as at other times, Samuel, Samuel. And Samuel answered, Speak, for your servant hears. Amen. So as my testimony, as I said, you know, that they spoke to me, you know, we can see here that Eli noticed that the Lord was speaking to Samuel, so he gave Samuel direction, just as they gave direction to me in my calling. But when I want to, when I go back to the message of, of my title, it says, where are you going? And this means as in, where are you going to step into your calling. Where are you going? Where is your calling? You know, where are you going within life? And as I stand here, you know, I just graduated university. So 2012 is the first, sorry, not 2012. 
2020 is the first year where I'll start off the year in January and not September. It's the first time where I'm mature enough to say, wow, a new decade is starting. You know, it's the 2020s are coming. What am I going to do? What, what steps am I going to take? Where is the Lord going to take me? Because, you know, right now I'm just working part time. Um, I don't really have, like, I don't have a job. I don't really have friends I need to attend to. I don't, I'm not in a relationship that needs me. So I say, okay, Lord, where am I going? Where am I going to go in 2020? Who knows? But when the Lord has called you to do something, you got to take that step of faith. You know, you got to say, you know, Lord, what am I going to do? Lord, wherever I go, Lord God, I'll go because I know you will be there. Because when the God, when, sorry, when the Lord has called you to do something, it is not to be afraid. It is not to, to, to be put down. No, you got to go to your calling. You got to take that step of faith because wherever the Lord has called you to go, wherever he's told you to, to go, wherever he's told you to do, whatever he's shown you, you know, our God is a good God, you know. Wherever he's going to take you, it may seem impossible, it may seem hard, but our God is good. And whatever he hasn't planned for us will be good, will be great because our Lord, that's who our God is. So I want to ask you guys, you know, where are you going? Where are you going within your calling? What's in store for you? Have you taken that step? Have you been obedient like Noah? Are we walking with God? And I even ask myself this because even though I have all this free time now, which is great, but at times I say, Lord, what am I doing? Like, I, li I like music, so most of the time I, I spend just recording music and stuff. But at times I realize, you know, Lord, this is, this is great and, and so much fun, but I, I should be spending more of this time with you. And, you know, I love to see when Nick and Reinhardt prophesy after a meeting, after they preach, after meetings like this. And I say, Lord, like, I want to do that. I want, I, want, I want that ability. I really want to do that. But I need to see where am I going in my life? What steps am I going to? Where is my calling? I need to be taking those steps of faith. I need to be walking with the Lord. I need to be closer to him. I need to build that relationship because wherever he's calling me to be, I need to be prepared. I need to be strong in the word. I need to be strong in the spirit. But most importantly, I need to be near to God because he is calling us. So that's my message. You know, where are you going? And I just want to leave you with that thought of where are we going within this new year? Where are you going within this new decade? What steps are you taking to get closer to the Lord or to get to your calling? And, you know, I just want to just urge you guys or just... Um, motivate you guys you know just to go on the monday night classes just to learn because it's helped me a lot and just to spend more time with him you know walk like noah did stay stay alert and attentive as samuel did try to be sensitive like him and always just just walk in the lord and just say lord here i am lord god what are you calling me to do lord because your servant hears and your servant is listening so i just want to leave you with that and i'll just close with prayer if that's cool Okay, so Lord, we just thank you for this day. Lord, I just thank you for all the things you're doing in our lives, Lord God. For the callings that you have upon us, Lord. For that specific calling that you have on each one of us, Lord God. Lord, I pray that we can just listen to you as your servants, Lord God. Just ready, Lord God. Just preparing our hearts, Lord. Preparing our lives just to worship you, Lord. And just to do the things that you've called us to do. So Lord, I pray that as this new year comes up, Lord God that we can just step further into you, Lord God. Just step further into that calling you have upon our lives, Lord. Step further into what you have in store for us, what you have in, for planned for us, Lord God. So Lord, we just give you all the praise, Lord God. I give you all the thanks, Lord God. And Lord, we give you all the glory because you are good, Lord, and you are so good to us, Lord God. In the name of Jesus, amen.